Hi, everybody. Today we're back with an encore presentation with Miss Alice in Madison, South Dakota, and my dear friend Marilyn. And those of you that tuned in last time, we had a wonderful tomato canning day. And today we're going to actually make some rolls. And this in front of you here is the Betty Crocker picture cookbook from 1956 that Alice has had that entire time, uses it consistently. And we're going to give you the recipe from here today that we're gonna make. See, they don't make cookbooks like this anymore. So stay tuned. I'm gonna teach you how to make rolls. Okay. Cinnamon rolls as well as sweet rolls. And here's a recipe. And because this recipe makes two dozen rolls, we're going to triple it because you wanna make a lot. Yeah, we've got skillet. lots of hungry people. And so, Thanksgiving. Okay. So the first thing we do when we make, when I make bread or anything, I make sure I've got all the ingredients together. Okay. Uh, because there's nothing worse than being in the middle of, of messing with dough and finding that you don't have cinnamon. In you know, you have to open a cupboard door and get cinnamon and get crappy crap. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> and you hate that. Or worse than that is that you suddenly don't have any brown sugar at all. Right. And you're going to make cinnamon rolls. Uh -huh. and so get everything together at once. And then I always get rid of all my rings jewelry because you don't want sticky dough on rings or jewelry. Okay, so the ingredients are pretty typical for bread. And we have uh, on the table in front of you, of course, we have flour, and this is bread flour, which Alice suggests you use bread flour. Mm -hmm. And Has there's more gluten. Yes, higher gluten content. So you'll get a little stronger dough there. And then um, Alice is going to use oil today. The recipe calls for shortening. You could use butter, so we'll talk about that in a bit. We have salt, eggs, sugar in that canister there, and brown sugar, milk, yeast, and cinnamon. What we're gonna do is scald some milk. Scald Alice. the milk and heat the water for the for the uh, yeast. So we measure the milk and how much we're going to triple this recipe. Okay, so, so that would be four and a half cups of lukewarm milk. And I do it by two cups, it's just easier. You have mm -hmm. deactivated the enzymes in the milk. Oh, okay. Which is what is why you have to heat the milk. Oh, okay. So there's a little film on there, a and you probably can't film. quite see it in the video, but that's what right. Alice is talking about. Okay, you put that in. Just pour it in. Pour it in. And then measure another cup and a half. Marilyn and I were both tested for COVID before we came up here because I don't want anyone watching this film to think that we were irresponsible to come and work with Miss Alice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there were six eggs since we tripled the batch. We got such nice sunshine coming through Alice's oh, window yes. for our video here. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a beautiful day today. Four cups of milk. And we want it a total Four and a half. Okay. Oh, we'll get, we'll just put. The thing about bread is if you under or over estimate, it doesn't matter. In cake or pie or cookies, it has to be perfect or you'll get a bad product. It doesn't matter so much. So we've got four and a half cups at yep. this point. Okay. So Alice just added a little bit more hot water. Hot. It was hot. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to prepare, or you're going to prepare. <laughs> Pardon me. I can't help but. That's I'm right. Crazy. She's teaching. <laughs> So we have water that is now too hot. Okay. The water needs to, what's the temperature? I can't remember. For yeast? Yeah. Like 113, I think? Yeah. Yeah, and you kind of know, don't Maddie you? Maddie can do this with her fingers. Mm -hmm. you put your fingers in there, mm -hmm. and you can tell that's way too hot. I think that's they hot. usually say a, a tip that I heard years ago was touch it to where it's as hot as you can stand, but I mean, not, not that you couldn't keep your finger in there. Yeah, well, that's But what bakers just know, don't they? You can always use your thermometer if you'd like to, though. About a tablespoon of sugar because you've got to feed your yeast. Or less, doesn't matter. And, yeah. Stir? No, don't stir no. it because you're going to. Oh. Okay. You can't put that in there. Remember? I know, it's too hot, right? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, still too hot. And so we can do one of two things we can add cold water, cool it down. Okay. 
And again, a little more fluid isn't going to be a deal, right, well, Alice? Because you'll add the flour accordingly. It's not a big deal. Okay. It's more of a big deal that that yeast not be killed by hot water. Right. So. That, is, that is crucial. Mm -hmm. You need the yeast. You don't want to kill it. But you also want to have it warm enough so it'll work. Exactly. So I've, I've stirred the sugar in. And then stir the sugar in. Okay. Still feels too hot Still to me. Still feels a little warm. Yeah. Okay, so I can add one and a half cups of oil just right to here, right? Yes. Okay, so Keep here we go. You measure your pan also. There's, There's one, one cup. cup. Now again, we're using oil, but the recipe calls for shortening, or I assume you could use some uh, soft butter as well. So two tablespoons of salt. Or six teaspoons into okay. the milk and the oil. We're done with this. We can actually put this away. Okay, salt gets put away. And now we have our water, just about the right temperature. Mm -hmm. Yes, so now do I add the yeast to the water? Yes. And so, so we figured out about four tablespoons of yeast yeah. um, for so this that's, recipe. That's... So once we get the yeast in, of course, you stir it well. And so there's sugar in there. Yep. And yeast. Yep. And warm water. Yes. So do you let this sit a while, Alice, or do you just I go ahead and it, start no, with no, it? No, I let it bubble. I want to make do, sure yes. my yeast is working. Bubbling so why so. is it okay that there are lumps in it like that, or do you want to? It'll bubble out. It'll bubble out. So those lumps right now, I shouldn't be too concerned about. Not too concerned. Okay. okay, what are we missing here in this? Well, we haven't added the eggs or flour. How about sugar? We haven't added the sugar <laughs> either. <laughs> we have filled here. So you can do that. So now times. we're going to add some sugar. And again, we're tripling. So adding it directly to the hot milk and oil. Okay. Yeah. See, it's cooling down the milk. I think you can add your eggs to that. Now I've just lightly whisked the eggs, mm -hmm. and, and that's what we want, like that. And stir them in. And you can tell already, just in the couple of minutes we've been filming, that that yeast past Maryland over there is starting to See? rise up. Yes. Looking good. Going. There you go. Growing, Thanks, Alice. Growing. Excellent. Looking awesome. So we know our yeast is great. It better be. We just purchased that in the last couple <laughs> days. And I don't know if so many of you know, during COVID, there's been sort of a shortage in a, yes. of supply of yeast and flour. And especially now, again, people are ramping up for the holidays, doing a lot of their own baking. Awesome. So now Marilyn's slowly adding this wonderful yeast that I'm going to stand in front of the sun a little bit here. There, now you can see a little better. Stirring that in. Scrape it all out. You want every bit of that yeast. Excellent. Okay, so we add and stir? Yeah, and you yeah. don't have to measure. Okay, you know, so. Alice is a pro, so she knows about how much flour it's going to take. But according to our recipe for tripling it, it'll be around Two. 20 cups, and we're adding half of it. So whatever whatever uh, amount Three. you decide to use, you'll want to put half in for now. So, Alice, you do not use a mixer. I don't use a mixer. I, I only have a little hand mixer. So you don't have a big KitchenAid? I or... don't. I don't have any I think that's things. interesting because I think a lot of people think they can't do dough because they don't have a mixer. And obviously you can do all this oh, by hand. Of course. Mm -hmm. Not only that, it gets rid of a lot of frustration. You can knead your dough. And... <laughs> Excellent <laughs> I, point. I find it relaxing, actually. Mm-hmm. Okay. Come around and, and get the sides as much as you want to get the flour into the into the dough. Mm -hmm. Good job. Yep. You've done. Still pretty runny. I think it'll run pretty well everywhere. So we'll add mm -hmm. a little more flour, Marilyn. Okay. I would think that she would because I think based on what I'm seeing, she's probably about, you know, 12, 13 cups here. So... You can imagine that if the recipe is accurate, it's going to require a couple more. I do this by feel. Mm -hmm. 
But if you don't know the feel, mm -hmm. then you have to follow. And usually recipes are pretty accurate, especially in mm -hmm. a cookbook like that. I know, yes. um, you know, and when you're doubling and tripling, you know, sometimes things can be odd in baking. Yes, so they are. To be careful with that. But Now it feels, I can feel a difference. It's coming mm -hmm. together in mm -hmm. a little bit of a different way. All the mistake most people make is they want to be done. They, you know, kneading is work. So they want to put it all in, but you put it in only a little bit. Be stingy with flour, always. You keep adding and you keep adding and you keep adding. And okay. what I usually do is I get a big container like this so I don't putz around with dirty fingers. And I sometimes even make a pile over here. Okay. To be ready. Okay. Do I dump so, all of this out at one time? Yes. And, and when you're doing that, you want to be sure it'll be running all over. This is a big batch. This is a very big batch. Got hungry kids that love grandma's dough. And mm -hmm. bread, rolls, anything from grandma. I put uh, flour on, on the edges here so that it keeps it from running away. I get as much of this out because you're going to let it raise in this pan. This is a lot more dough than you'll ever want to make it when you're practicing. <laughs> <laughs> Can't keep flour on your hands and no. Can I start to like do like this? Is that right? Yeah, get it together. Okay, am I pushing down yet? Am I kneading or am I no, just kind just, of you're just, just kind you're of gathering? Trying to gather. Okay. Because you can't knead at this point. You're, it's too sticky. Okay. You want to get it to where you can work it. See, you now you've got a lot of flour here. I work my flour out and away. Oh, away, okay. Away. Be stingy with your flour. Put it in slowly and carefully. But keep enough under it so it doesn't stick. Always push it, I always push it to the side. Looks like a beautiful dough already. It's just tough. Uh, it really, feels really good. Mm, doesn't it? It's spongy. Yeah. yeah. The mistake people make is putting too much flour too fast. You want to develop gluten at this point. You want to keep kneading this Marilyn until you get a feeling it's satiny. It doesn't want to take a lot more flour. It will take more, but it feels like satin. We're not there yet. No, it's still sticky. Yep. Okay. Pushing the bread away, flour away. Yeah, it's getting there, Marilyn, so you have to be careful at this point. So beautiful. Mm-hmm. You see, a little bit. Stingy with the flour. How are your fingers doing? Pretty good. <laughs> I think you better empty, you know, put some flour in your hands and empty all of that. That's a whole cinnamon roll yes. in your hands. <laughs> Sorry, Marilyn, I don't no. want to take the job away from you, but see, a little tiny bit, very little, just so it won't stick on. It's so much dough that it's obviously taking longer than it normally it would for a yes. smaller batch. You're such an expert at it. Oh, nothing. See, keep She's turning. She's done it a couple times. Yeah. yeah. Keep turning. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it feels satiny, so I'm going to cut... There's too much dough here for, um, and, and when you cut, you want to flour. It's okay that it's got a little stickiness to it at this yes. point, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So this is ready to go in to the smaller here. pan. Perfect, though. Yeah. Okay. And then this goes in, we'll go into this one. And then put all the extra, don't leave any rolls on the table. Box paper on top, Alice, versus like saran or anything like that? I don't use saran because saran holds it too tight. Oh, okay. So 
What about like a towel, like a kitchen towel that would stick, maybe? You could do that, but it might stick. I just find that wax paper. Energy, there you go. And then I enclose it in the oven. So well, let's put her oven on, just warm, and then um, shut it off. And then she's just going to actually turn the oven light on, which is going to keep <laughs> it just warm enough. Give it just enough warmth. It is 9.35, and, and we are putting these two. I don't know where to go. So about an hour. Okay. And the, But the smaller one, you might be earlier than an hour. Okay. And the bigger one might be later. So, you, But give an hour. And we want so it to it double in size. Bach. And okay. we'll show you how to test that. Well, I'm getting closer oh. back here. Okay, Alice is pulling out the beautiful risen dough, as you can yes. see. And I'm going to put it on the table so I don't get flour. And I've just washed my hands. We had two, as you recall, So pans. Okay, so you want to know if it's risen enough until you put your thumbs in and it comes right back, closes right back in. And this is ready to knead. And let's take a look at this one. And it's the same thing. See, it, it closes in. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put a flour on my hands. And just, just gonna get it to the center, knead it down. I didn't want this running over, which is why we put it in two pans. Mm -hmm. So you punched it down basically. Punched it down. I'm going to raise and twice. It raise huh? again because you get a lighter bread. Mm -hmm. Raise it twice. Most people don't, and I think most recipes don't even do it. Now, will you but also I, raise it again after you roll the dough and put oh, it on yeah, pans? So you really raise three times, really, yes. if you think about it, right? Yes. And most recipes no longer call for that. But I've done it for 75 years, and I just can't get out of the habit. I do not blame you. Let's see, I push it down to the middle. Okay. And it feels really good. It's plenty good sticky. Job. It should be. So when people do this, they'll know that it's supposed to be sticky at this point mm -hmm. still. I've got flour in my hand so it doesn't mm -hmm. stick to me. Okay. And at this point, generally, when I push, punch it down the second time, I start getting my pans ready because it takes me about as that long to get ready. Okay, so this this second rising doesn't it's, take as no, long. No, this goes much more quickly. Okay, so the back in. Still, the oven is still nice and warm, just right. Alice has a towel in on her oven rack because it was a little warm in the beginning and she didn't right. want it to be too hot, so you might not need that. Yeah. And then. How thin? Well, fairly, fairly generously. <laughs> that's, that's just going to oil generous. the pan there. I bet what Alice uses shortening. Now you want to dip the whole thing. Pump the whole thing up? Yeah, right here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Do we, are we trying to be careful with it? At this point, you, can, you can't hurt bread. You can be okay. rough with it. Okay. Once it's raising, you've got to treat it like glass. Okay, so let's cut this in about half. You know, I want to make it like pie dough. Okay, so do flat, I do it? Flat, you can do it with your hands. You can do it with a rolling pin. Sure, you got flour in your rolling pin. Right now, we're going to make some crescent rolls, so we're going in a circle <clears throat> for Miss Alice. She's a very wanted woman, as you can tell. The phone rings off the hook here. <laughs> 908, I don't have that number either. So rolling down into a circle. Circle. Jerry and it's okay that I'm popping the bubbles out of this, Yes, right? that's fine. That's what you want to do. You can hear the bubbles pop. Uh-huh. Those are air bubbles. Bit like that feels pretty pie. good. Okay. Not... Okay. Yeah, I know I've seen people use a pizza cutter for this, too, so mm -hmm. if you would uh, so do that. Just yeah. like this? Yeah, just cut little pieces to the middle. And keep going. Like that size mm -hmm. or so? Mm-hmm. Why, why it end on 
face okay. and, you know, and then to roll it. Beautiful. See? Easy. To have it rolled, you see you've got a loose end and you put that loose end down so it doesn't flip up. Put it down on the can. So at this point, you treat it tenderly. Okay. You can, and I put it in the oven again to raise. These are rolling out into an oblong shape. Okay, the next thing to do is to butter it. Okay. So, and a stick. Uh, how much butter would you say for an oblong piece like this, Alice? Uh, I would start with it. Let's, let's just see. Butter generously. So you obviously want your butter sitting out so it's nice and mm -hmm. soft, and you don't use melted butter. No. Okay, so just softened butter. So now, um, once the dough is buttered, then Alice says um, sugar next and brown sugar. Sweet. Okay. Uh, and if you have, and again, go to the ends here. So be generous with it, and again, mm -hmm. it's going to make a difference in how mm -hmm. big your size is. But and, uh, how's that? That's that's pretty generous. Okay. It's a little too generous. Yeah. Okay. You want to spread it, yeah. Okay, so we're going to spread that want, out. Yeah. So once you, you cover, and Alice advises us to be sure we go clear to the edges with mm -hmm. the butter and everything else so that mm -hmm. everyone so gets that. a nice taste. And then cinnamon. Brand new cinnamon. And I know people, you know, people vary on how much cinnamon they like, but we agreed that... Um, Quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Be generous with the cinnamon. Mm. Good smelling cinnamon. Okay, I'm gonna, s you tell me. Is that too generous? Mm -mm. I know we've all gone to a place and purchased a cinnamon roll that had very little cinnamon inside and it's disappointing. <laughs> so be sure that you, if you're gonna go to all mm -hmm. this effort, that you Good. be generous, right? Did you ever put raisins in your cinnamon rolls? I have, but mm -hmm. I find that the you know, they stick out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not popular, I don't think. Yeah. I think the cinnamon roll should be eaten as a cinnamon roll. Roll. I'm starting to the back and rolling toward. toward, toward and I'm trying to keep this okay. tight? Yeah, fairly tight so the food's a little sprinkled stay in. And if it gets a little fatter in the middle, don't worry about it. Is that? Kind of like helping each other roll up a rug. <laughs> <laughs> Teamwork is always good. Bring it down to the end. Get rid of that extra flour. Now, do you wet the end or anything so it'll stick, or do you just, I since don't. they're in a pan together, you probably don't need I to. I don't. Yeah. Perfect. Now, you need a sharp knife to cut these, because otherwise they'll stick and be gummy and icky. Mm hmm and then and it should be cut roughly the same size well, maybe a couple widths of a finger yeah like like that mm -hmm. and they should be touching not real tight but touching so that uh, otherwise it, you want them to raise you don't want them to flat okay oh. okay so this is the pan that marilyn fixed up for us touching fairly close together and that's going to proof off here in this beautiful sunshine you can see these are yeah. just no, ready to bake now. They've been ways, proofed yeah. again, set That's out for a great. bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Marilyn's going to put them in the oven. We have a 375. So like, and so then there they go. And the timer has to be set for how many? 10 minutes on the timer. Okay, the timer is off. The vending are 10 minutes, and I'm going to switch them. See, it's oh, the top is getting it. Really nice. Okay. And we'll give it, we'll start with a good seven minutes. Oh, yes. Okay. Now, Alice says she doesn't butter anything on the way out. They had plenty of butter on the way in. And don't you love that flour look on top? Mm -hmm. I think that's beautiful. Good job, ladies. <laughs> so, of course, like we do in all videos, we're going to have a taste. So, Marilyn will go ahead and let's try this. Have her taste it's great on the dough. It's delicious. Oh, that's great. Crusty outside, tender mm -hmm. inside. Perfect. Mm. Make these, you guys. It's worth the effort. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is a cinnamon okay. roll that we made, and we're done here with it. So, of course, we always like to taste. I'm going to 
and give this a taste. And you know what I'm going to tell you before we even try it. Mm -hmm. It's tender. Of course, it's sweet. It has a little crunch. Another excellent product. And remember, we're making it out of the same dough that we did the crescent roll. So it's really easy to make a little dessert as well. Try this out. Take care.